In this guide, I'm going to cover four ways to simulate email sending within your Laravel applications. Uh, this is, of course, important when you're working on an application in development and you want to test your email sending functionality, but you don't want to actually be sending real world users emails. Instead, you want to simulate that email sending process so you can confirm that everything's working as expected before you take your application to production. To cover these details, we need to first set up uh, some code within a Laravel application that will actually trigger an outgoing message. And the way I'm going to set this example up is I've just got a basic route here that when we trigger it, it will invoke the mail facade to, to send a quick, simple message to uh, this particular email address. Um, keep in mind, though, because of how we're going to set things up, an outgoing email is not actually going to be sent to janedoe at gmail.com. We're going to be uh, capturing that email or, or simulate the sending of it uh, for testing purposes. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this into our application. I've got a brand new Laravel application set up here. I've got my web routes file open. I'm just going to add this at the very end. And because this code is using that uh, mail facade, we just need to make sure that is accessible within this file. So I'll add a use statement up top. And that example should be good to go. Uh, we'll trigger this in a second. Before we do that though, we do want to configure our application for the first approach we're gonna see for email testing, which is to route any outgoing email to our log file. And the way we're gonna configure this is real easy. We're just gonna go to our environment file in the root of our application. And then down under the mail related settings, we wanna change the mailer that we're using. The default is SMTP. We're going to change it to log. So now anytime our application uh, is triggered to send an outgoing email, rather than actually sending it, it should just write it to our log file. To see this in action, let's trigger our test route here. So we're just going to load up the application and go to test email. And the results we see here is just the confirmation message I had added uh, saying that the email was sent. And of course, because we don't see any errors here, we can assume that that worked. So let's go back to our application code base. And what we want to do is we want to look in our log file and make sure that this email that we just sent was written to that log file. So under my storage directory, I'm going to go to logs and open up laravel.log. And there we go. There's a copy of our message. You could see uh, the recipient, janedoe at gmail.com. Here's the subject, and then here's the body. These were all details we had set up when sending this email. So with approach number one of writing to the log file, I think the pros of this is obviously it was really simple to set up. It was just one setting change in our environment file. Um, I think the downside of this is just that uh, as we get further into the development of our applications, there's probably a lot of other things that are being written to our logs files. So it can sometimes be a little tedious to have to go through there and try to find the emails that you're looking for, uh, especially if you're dealing with code that's potentially sending emails to multiple recipients at the same time. You've got to sort through that. Uh, so as a, a next step approach, uh, something that would make it a little bit easier to look at the resulting emails, I recommend a development SMTP mail server. What this will do is it'll allow your application to uh, actually send these outgoing emails, but rather than send them to the recipients uh, specified in your code, uh, it's going to send it to like a dummy inbox that you can then browse through and look at all your test messages. Uh, to see what I mean by this, the first example of how we can set up a development SMTP server is using an outside service called MailTrap. Let me go back to my browser and pull up the MailTrap website. So this is MailTrap.io. All right, it's described as an email sandbox service, capture SMTP traffic from staging and dev environments, which is uh, exactly what we want to do. Now, this is a paid for service. If you look at pricing, you can see the different options. Uh, but for this example, we're just going to use the free plan. And for a lot of small scale uh, applications, the free plan is actually sufficient. So let's take advantage of that just to try MailTrap out as one of our options. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. I already have an account. Of course, if you don't have an account, you want to sign up first. Uh, but regardless, we just want to get into the system. And then once we're logged in, we should see an option for a demo inbox. So I'm going to click that. And you can see we haven't sent any emails yet. So our inbox is empty. And on the right, we see a bunch of information for basically how to get MailTrap set up. And what we want to do is under SMTP settings and integrations, we want to find the option for Laravel. 
and it'll give us all of the environment configurations we need to add to start routing our email to MailTrap. So I'm going to copy this exactly as it's written here. Go back to my application, back to my environment file. And I'm going to uh, add these mail settings. And then I'm just going to comment out any of the existing mail settings that were here that are redundant with the ones that I just added. All right, so here you can see the mailer we're using. We're no longer using log. We're now using the SMTP mailer that Laravel provides. The particular host we're using is MailTrap's SMTP servers. This is the port they want us to use. Uh, here's our MailTrap specific username and password. Of course, the information you have here on your end would vary from what I see. And then just some encryption details. All right, so with those settings in place, let's trigger another email from our application. So I'm gonna go back to my test email route and just refresh this. All right, and that should have sent the email. And so now coming back to MailTrap, you can see my demo inbox has actually automatically refreshed and here's my testing email. And we see the same content we saw in the log file. We're just seeing it in this uh, more real world inbox example. So hopefully you can imagine how this is uh, more convenient than having to dig through a log file for these emails. And it just more replicates the kind of experience your users are gonna have when they're actually receiving these emails. Additionally, there's also some other interesting features that MailTrap provides. For example, they have an API. So let's say uh, you're working on test code and you're testing out features in your application. And you wanna make sure that those features are sending emails as expected. You could actually ping the MailTrap API and check for email messages, check the content, the recipient, the subject, et cetera. Uh, so definitely take a look at the uh, features that MailTrap provides. It might be something that is worth investing in. Uh, but let's say you want this experience where you can view your test messages in an inbox, but you don't want to pay for MailTrap. Uh, another option is you can set up a local development SMTP server using something called MailHog. And Laravel actually comes with MailHog installed by default, so it's real easy to get set up. Uh, to show what you have to do, let's go back to the notes that I have for this video. We're going to scroll down. We've already covered the log approach. We just covered the MailTrap approach. We want to come down here to MailHog. And uh, there's two different sets of settings you might use depending on how you set up your Laravel application. The first set of settings is if you installed Laravel via Composer. And the second set is if you set up Laravel using Sail and Docker. Um, I'm gonna show examples of both. Uh, because I'm currently working in a version of Laravel that I set up with Sail, I'm actually gonna start there. So these are the configs I wanna take and put in my environment file. So I'm gonna copy this from the notes. And then let me just comment out my previous settings for MailTrap. We're gonna bring in our settings for MailHog. And you can see within these settings, it's gonna be using a SMTP mailer and the host where it's gonna be looking for the mailer uh, is MailHog. And this host is set up by Laravel Sale for us by default. So as long as our application is running behind the scenes via Laravel Sale, which this example currently is, our MailHog server should also be accessible. And the way we can confirm this, um, coming back to the notes, I have an address here where we actually access the MailHog interface. So I'm gonna load this, it's localhost on port 8025. All right, and this is what the mailbox or the MailHog inbox looks like. And you can see it's currently empty. Um, if I go back to my testing route and trigger another email to be sent, what we should see is that email shows up now in our MailHog inbox. It's no longer showing up in MailTrap because we changed our settings to direct everything through MailHog. So as you can see, if you're using Laravel, Sail, and Docker, really straightforward, just a couple environment setting changes and you can immediately start to use MailHog. Um, if you set up your application, uh, your Laravel application via Composer, it's also similar. Uh, the only difference is, is just that you need to explicitly start the MailHog server using this command MailHog. Uh, to see this in action, let me switch gears to a Laravel application I set up with Composer. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, in command line, I'm just going to stop my application that's currently running in sale. So I'm going to stop that. And then I'm going to switch over to my other example. This is, I just called it example app two. And I'm going to go ahead and start my server here. I'm just going to use the PHP artisan uh, serve command to start a simple server for this. All right, so that should be running. And then in a new tab, I also want to get the mail hog server running. So again, within my example app two directory here, I'm just going to run mail hog. 
All right, so that should be running. My server's running. Uh, the last thing we need to do is just configure this application to actually be using these servers. So again, coming back to the notes, these are the configs that we want to use. And uh, let me open up this other application here in my code editor. So I'm going to go into my environment file, comment out the default mail settings and paste in the settings uh, from the notes. Save those changes and uh, of course to actually test this, I do need that uh, example code that sends the email that we we're using in our previous sale-based application. So I'll just quickly go back and borrow that. And to test it out, let's load our example in the browser. So here's the address that we got from Artisan Serve. We're gonna bring this up and the route we wanna go to is that test email route. All right, so that should have sent the email. And then to access the MailHog interface, um, it's gonna be the same address. So it's still localhost 8025. So if we go back here, uh, let's refresh this and you can see there's our message. It was sent a few seconds ago and let's just trigger that again. Go back, refresh, and we should now have uh, two messages within here. All right, so like I said, the main difference if you're setting up Laravel via Composer is just making sure that the MailHog server is also actively running. Uh, if you forget to do that, if you stop it, um, what you'll see when you try to access MailHog is it just won't be available. And with that, those are two uh, potential solutions for your development email testing when it comes to a uh, development focus SMTP server. MailHog, of course, being the free option. MailTrap uh, being a subscription-based service, but it does have some additional features built in, things like the API I was talking about, and it has some other collaboration features that might be useful if you're working with a team of developers. Uh, but moving on, the last approach for development and testing email I want to talk about is uh, a global to address. This is a setting you can put in your application so that any outgoing email is just going to be sent to a email address of your choosing. So you could say set up like a Gmail address just for testing purposes. You could have all email sent to that uh, or you could just use your personal email address, whatever you want. The idea here is not to send the email to the actual recipients, send it to yourself instead so that you can test it, that it's working as expected. Uh, the way you set this up is within a service provider. Um, I'm going to show it specifically with the app service provider. We're going to put this code here that says if our current environment is local, in other words, we only want to do this when we're in development, uh, we're going to say mail always to, and we're going to specify, uh, specify the email address that we want all outgoing email to go to. And just to see this in action, um, let me set this up in my sale example. So I'm going to close out this window, go back to my sale example, go to find my app service provider. I'll find this under my app directory providers, there's app service provider. I'm going to put this in the boot method. And then uh, we are using the mail facade here again, so I just need to make sure I include that. And now any outgoing email, when I'm running my application in my local environment, which looking at my environment file, you could see it's currently set to local. So uh, it should apply in this context. Um, any outgoing email is going to be sent to this address. Now, the thing to understand with this approach is how the email is sent is still going to rely on how our email is configured in our environment file, right? And currently in this example, the last I had changed my email settings, it was using the MailHog server. So if I ran this test right now, it would send it to my MailHog inbox. Uh, the difference that this code would make is just that the recipient would be marked as the address that I have listed here. Uh, and that's really kind of duplicating our two different testing approaches, right? Because if I'm already sending it to MailHog, it doesn't really matter who I'm sending it to. I don't need to override the address. So typically you wouldn't use this in approach in combination with something like MailHog. Where you would use this approach is if you had a SMTP server that you were using, say, on production for sending your emails and you wanted to use that same server in testing and you didn't want to accidentally send emails when testing, well, this is where the global two could uh, come into play. Um, now, I don't actually have a production email server set up for this example. Uh, so to simulate this, I'm actually just going to change my mailer back to the log just so we can see what this outgoing email is going to look like and just confirm that if this were to actually be sent, this is the address it would send it to. All right, so give me a moment. Let me start this application back up. I had stopped it for the previous example so I could show Laravel via Composer. 
So I'm just gonna go back into my first example. We'll run sale up to get this up and running. And then I'll go ahead and pull this up in the browser and trigger our, um, our test email route again. All right, so that should have sent it. And now going back to my log file, this first message is the one we sent earlier. And then the second one is the one that I just triggered. And the main thing we're uh, checking for here is that the recipient under two is in fact the address I set in that global two code. So it's sending to mail at codewithsusan.com. Even though technically we're trying to send it to Jane Doe, we have overwritten that in our app service provider. So any outgoing email is actually going to this email address and uh, we can see that here. Now, in terms of the pros and cons of this particular approach, I guess I would say that the main pro is, let's say you didn't want to deal with a mail or a development specific mail server like MailHog or MailTrap. Like you didn't want to sign up for MailTrap. You didn't want to make sure MailHog was running. You just want to use the same mail server on production locally. This would allow you to do that while still capturing those outgoing emails in testing and development. So you're not accidentally blasting real world users. Uh, but personally, I don't often use this approach just because as we saw, setting up MailHog was really simple and it's free. Uh, that's typically the approach that I'm going to go with. With the exception of, let's say I've just started an application. It's pretty small, not too involved yet. Maybe I'll just start off with the log file. And then later as the needs of the application grows, it might make sense to switch over to something like MailHog. Um, I have worked on uh, teams where you're collaborating with lots of developers. In that case, the uh, extra benefits you get with something like MailTrap might be worth uh, paying for their services. So it really just depends on what the needs of your applications are in terms of which of these approaches you're going to choose.